tired already? It's been an hour. You don't have to prove to me that Manhattan is an island. I believe you. Hey, look, Ellie. A dollar each. You can get French, Italian, every kind of cookbook for less than ten dollars. That's terrible. Well, I just meant that maybe there was some little obscure recipe that you didn't know about. Chicken delatore, liver and peppers, who knows? That's not what I meant. And what is chicken delatore? See, you don't know every recipe. What's so terrible, then? What's so terrible is that somebody would write a book about anything and they'd sell it for only a dollar. And there is no such thing as chicken delatore, is there? I mean, you just made that name up for the sake of an argument. If you're going to use something for the sake of an argument, you might as well use something that exists. It makes your argument stronger. Is that so? Yes, according to argument and counter-argument. It's a book I bought for a dollar on the corner of 73rd in Amsterdam. You're kidding. No, oh, no, and there's a great book you've got to get, Guide to Corner Bookstalls. I got it on the corner of Madison and If 59. you don't want to buy a cookbook, don't buy a cookbook. What's up? Chip's been experimenting with Mom's wedding presents. Okay, how do you want your eggs? Sliced, diced, or pureed? I'm not having any breakfast. I'm saving my appetite for Ted. Ooh, Ted's coming home? Yeah, he's coming for lunch. Ah, no wonder you look so hot. Aloha! I recognize Mom, but who's a big kahuna? Will you put me down now? No. You're my wife, and I'm gonna carry you over every threshold between New York and Honolulu. Well, now we know who wears the Bermuda shorts in this family. Please put me down. Well, okay. But only because I have to use a little grass shack in the hallway. Mom, can I please go to Hawaii with you? I'll stay out of your way. You guys aren't going anywhere if you don't hustle. Didn't you tell your dad you'd be on the 9 o'clock train? Whoops. Don't leave without saying goodbye. So, how was your first night of marital bliss? Terrible. As I was warming up, he was dozing off. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, that's okay. I divorced him. Now ask me how my second first night of marital bliss was. <laughs> Better? Oh, love is lovelier the second time around. So tell me, why are you better dressed for my honeymoon than I am? <laughs> why, this old thing? When's Ted getting back? That obvious? Well, I would at least cut off the tag. Oh. Good thing you noticed. If Ted ever saw how much this thing cost, he might know just how much I missed him. On second thought, maybe we should leave it on. Mm. <laughs> it's a shame Ted missed our wedding by just one day. Yeah. I hope that you and Bob don't miss ours. What? Well, it would be the perfect time, Allie. So I decided that when Ted gets back, I'm gonna propose. <laughs> You're not serious. When Ted proposed to you, you turned him down. That's because he proposed that we get married, move to Brooklyn, and have kids. I'm gonna propose that we get married, stay in Manhattan, and see how it goes. <laughs> are you marrying Ted because I married Bob? Maybe. Look how happy you are. If I jumped off a cliff, would you jump off a cliff? <laughs> oh, shut up, Mom. Are you happy for us or not? Very. How are you gonna propose? Over hot coals. Why don't you just shove bamboo under his fingernails? <laughs> Ted's coming over for a barbecue. I'm gonna ask him between courses. Good plan. Only we don't have a barbecue. Oh, it's just this little game we play. We use the broiler and pretend. I know it sounds silly, but it usually ends up being very romantic. Serves up, Gidge! <laughs> I uh, told the kids we'd drop them off at the train station on the way to the airport. That's as far as Chip could con him into taking us. I'll wear him down in the camp. <laughs> oh, I wish Ted were here to throw poi. Ready, Moondoggy? Let's go, Kokomo. Bye, Dave. Bye, Jim. Bye, Jim. Bye, Chip. Have fun at your dad's. Goodbye. Bye, Allie. Oh. Bye, Bob. Bye. <laughs> Aloha. I miss you. Have fun, guys. Dun, dun, da, da. 32 A and B right here. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so excited. Say, honey, <laughs> let's get those Mai Tais flowing. We'll be coming around with a beverage cart after takeoff, sir. We don't want a beverage. We want Mai Tais. Mai Tais! Mai Tais! Mai Tais! Nice conservative group. 
Didn't you think they'd be? Who asked? There were two places left in the tour. I grabbed it. Saved four hundred dollars. Give me my two hundred. <laughs> Herb Driscoll. Just call me Herbie. Oh, uh, Bob Barsky. Uh, this is my wife, Allie. My wife? Oh, <laughs> newlyweds, huh? huh? Honeymooners, huh? Congratulations! Hey, honeymooners! Hey, Herbie, the gals on this island really wear grass skirts? Well, I packed my lawnmower. <laughs> Sleep much on these long flights? Miss all this action? <laughs> so, which of you is IRS? IRS? Neither one of us. Our travel agent just booked us on your tour. Everybody works for the Internal Revenue Service? Yep. Thanks for the trip. <laughs> How about a tune? Sure thing! A tune? <clears throat> Any requests? A different flight. Yeah, yeah. Here's one you'll all recognize. Bum. Just sit right back and you'll hear a tale. A tale of a fateful trip. Plum, plum. That started from this tropic port aboard this tiny ship. Plum, plum. These people have my name. They can hurt us. The skipper, great and sure. Five passengers set sail that day for a three-hour tour. Everybody! A three-hour tour. Now the weather started getting rough. The tiny ship was... I'll get it. <laughs> Hello? Oh, hi, Ted. Where are you? I've got the barbecue all fixed up. Emilio's? But... Oh, no. No, no, Emilio's. That would be great. I, w I was really hoping that you would call and ask me to meet you at Emilio's. <laughs> okay. I'll meet you there in about an hour. But I warn you, I may not pass the dress code. I can't wait. See you there. Bye. Take one down, pass it around. Zero. Zero bottles of beer on the lawn. Bobo! Oh, thank God you're back. Did I miss anything? Only about 50 bottles of beer on the wall. Are the rooms ready yet? Uh, not yet. They said to have another drink in the house and our rooms would be ready wicky wicky. If I have another drink, I'm gonna be sicky sicky. Bob, uh, since we have a little time... Call her. Thanks. I just wanted to see if Ted said yes. Yeah, but hurry back, okay? I'm dying to get this honeymoon started. But the room's not ready yet. But I am. Oh, back in a flash. <laughs> I just wanted to know if I was going to be a bridesmaid. I didn't ask him to marry me. Why not? He was breaking up with me, and I didn't want to interrupt. <laughs> oh, no. Wait a minute. Ted broke up with you? Yep. Because he still wants to have kids? In a way. What do you mean? He wants to have them with someone else. He met another woman while he was with his family on vacation, and it was goodbye, Kate, at first sight. Oh, Kate. She just wants everything he wants, Allie. The kids in the street, the spaghetti on the stove, the ring around the collar. <laughs> Are you sure? I mean, is this really it? I don't know. I guess so. He kept on talking, but after it sunk in, I, I just stopped hearing. I just sat there watching his lips move. It was like watching him read, only sadder. <laughs> Oh, Kate, I'm sorry. Allie, I, I, I really can't talk anymore. I'm numb. I can't even think anymore. Are you sure? Positive. Well, listen, you have the number of the hotel. I want you to call me any time. I mean it, any time. Yeah, I will. Call? I will. Bye. Bye. Tell me. The 
There must be some way I can pay less tax. Sure. Quit your job. Uh -uh. <laughs> oh, here comes the little woman. Allie, you look so sad. What's the matter? Probably heard your room's ready. He couldn't have known it was me. At least he couldn't prove it. Hello? I woke you. I'm sorry. I didn't think you'd be able to sleep. You were right. What's up? I was worried about you. How are you feeling? Like someone let the air out of my heart. I know how you feel. No, you don't, Allie. I know you've been through a lot, but every breakup is just a little bit different. How is the cake? How did you know I ate cake? <laughs> did you call just to hear the sound of his voice and hang up on him yet? <laughs> okay, I guess most breakups are pretty much the same, but it doesn't make it hurt any less. You should call somebody. You shouldn't be alone. Who would I call? that guy that hired us to cater his Super Bowl party? He asked you out. What was his name? How would I know? Uh, Don something. Howard. Good for you. <laughs> I told him I had a boyfriend, Allie. Well, now you don't. Call him. His name is in the file. That's a good idea. I'll, I'll, ca I'll call him in a few weeks, you know, when I'm feeling better. A few weeks is too long. Those knees up, up, up. Now, touch your toes. May I speak to Don Howard, please? Oh, uh, it didn't sound like you. This is Kate McCarl. Maybe you remember me. I was so... Oh, yeah, you do? Hmm. Uh, well, I'm calling because... Um, well, this is a follow-up call. How do we do with your Super Bowl party? <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Yeah. Uh-huh. Pardon me? It's 7 a.m.? <laughs> I don't believe me. I'm sorry. Ever since I broke up with my boyfriend, I've just... Yeah, we did. <laughs> Hi, Don. Hi. Come on in. I know I'm early. I'm paying you back for that wake-up call this morning. Oh, sorry about that. It's just that the Rolodex was open to H, and I'm a sucker for an open Rolodex. These first date conversations aren't easy, are they? <laughs> How about this? I remember that you work on Wall Street, but I don't remember exactly what it is you do. Can I get you a drink? <laughs> sure. Diet anything. I buy and sell bond futures. Oh, that is a lot more interesting. More interesting than what? I don't know, than, say, being a doctor or a dumb, stupid plumber or something like that. <laughs> hey, why so hard on plumbers? Wait a minute. Your boyfriend was a plumber. How do you know that? Well, you told me the night I asked you out. You said he was a plumber who loved a baseball, uh, hated to wear ties, and was afraid of spiders. That was Ted. Mm. Am I drinking alone? Oh, I only had diet, and I want to get fat. <laughs> do you like baseball? No. Football's my game. Well, obviously, you don't mind wearing a tie. You're not afraid of spiders, are you? Sorry. When did you two break up, anyway? Recently. I see. As recent as a quarter to seven this morning? Oh, no, no. Way back at nine o'clock last night. <laughs> then you should be all over it by now. Come on, get your coat. I'll take you to dinner. I'm not sure I'm going to be very much fun tonight. 
Oh, will you excuse me for just a minute? <laughs> will you accept a call from Honeymoon Hill? It's pouring rain down here, and we're stuck in a farm with drunken IRS agents. Can you hang on a minute? I don't know how long this is going to take. Maybe this isn't such a good night for us to go out. Maybe you rushed it a little. <laughs> Maybe. Sorry. I understand. Some night soon? Yeah. Thanks. And... Thanks. Good night, Kate. Good luck. Good night. Hi. Who was that? I had a date. Don't let anyone ever tell you you're predictable. With whom? Don Hauer. But it wasn't right. What happened? Oh, Allie, it wasn't Ted. The only guy I want is Ted. Now you feel that way, but in a few days... Allie, the only reason that Ted dumped me for another woman was because she wanted to move to Brooklyn and have children, and I don't. He couldn't possibly love her more than he loves me. So? So, if I want to get him back, all I have to do is move to Brooklyn and have children. You're not serious. Why not? Because you just said that's not what you want. Well, it's not exactly what I want, but neither is being depressed and lonely. Allie, being without Ted has made me realize how much I want to be with him. But it hasn't been 24 hours. That's enough. Enough to change your whole life? I've decided that I'd rather just be what Ted wants me to be than to be without him. Kate, listen to yourself. You're panicking. You're talking crazy. No, I'm speaking perfectly calmly. And right now, I'm going to go over and talk to him perfectly calmly. No, that's the last thing you should do. Why don't you sleep on it? I can't, Ellie. I have to go there right now while I'm all dressed up. Well, at least call him first. No, he can't smell my perfume over the telephone. Trust me on this one, Ellie. I've got to go. Listen, you go back to Don Ho, and I'll call you later. Kate, wait. Bye. Oh, oh, oh. I'm sorry you startled me. Can I help you? I, I, I was looking for Ted. He used to live here. Oh, he still does. I'm just on my way to meet him. I'll, I'll tell him you came by. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't know your name. I'm Kate. You must be... Liz. Uh, Liz Del Russo. Oh, uh, hi. Uh, 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 yes, well, I'll tell Ted you came by. Look, I, I know this is a little awkward, which is kind of like saying someone is a little dead, but... <laughs> Can I talk to you for a minute? I'm not sure that's a good idea. Why don't I ask Ted to call you? No, no, I, I, I really would, I really would rather talk to you first. All right. <laughs> you mind if we sit down? I'm not standing very well these days. Oh, I understand. <laughs> right ahead. Ted didn't tell me you were so beautiful. He didn't even tell me that you were here. <laughs> he, he was he was worried that it would make it harder for you. Oh, you two talked it over. Well, uh, yes, we did. Well, he was right. So, uh, what, what, you meeting him for dinner or something? Uh, yes. French, Italian, barbecue? Uh, Kate, I, I'm starting to feel a little bit warm. If why don't you take your coat off and we'll step outside? <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry. I'm in really in a strange mood. I really, I should be going. No, please don't look. You seem like a very nice person, and I just want to be honest with you. You're totally wrong for him. <laughs> you told me you'd say that. No, we've broken up before. It's never stopped. Oh, you told me that too. Are you okay? Yes, I, I'm. I'm uh, wearing this wool sweater, and when I start to perspire, I get hives. Sometimes. Oh, Ted gets hives whenever he eats strawberries. We went on this little. Picnic yes, he once. told me. Jeez. What is this? Can't this guy keep anything to himself? <laughs> what else did he tell you? Oh, he told me that he was in love with you, but that you wouldn't agree to marry him because he wants a family, and you don't. He said he was in love with you? Yes. 
If he's in love with me, then why are you here? He didn't say he is in love with you. Oh, right there, right, 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 right. Oh, oh, that's great, that's great. Thank you. He said he was in love with you before. Oh, before he met you. Yeah. Um, it's getting late. We should go. I want to marry him, Liz. So do I. Maybe, but I'd be better for him than you are. I mean, <laughs> you're allergic to sheep. <laughs> That's better than being allergic to children. I'm not allergic to children. I have a daughter. I love children. I love sheep. Then marry one. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm sorry. If I'm acting a little crazy, it's because I have a lot at stake here. I've got a whole life at stake here. A whole life? You've only known this guy three weeks. Well, that's all it takes when it's right. I've known Ted for three weeks, and I'm ready to make a commitment. You were with him for two years, and you weren't. Are you so sure that he's making a mistake? It's really late. I'm, I'm going. I would rather change my whole life than lose him. Are you coming? I love him. I'll tell him. Please, um, lock the door when you leave. Just turn the lock to the left and... Oh. I guess you already know how it goes. Yeah. I know how it goes. Oh, Kate, I should have been with you. It wouldn't have helped. I just went crazy. Well, you're not the first to be a fool for love. I argued. I groveled. I debased myself. I have never debased myself before. I have groveled, but never debased. Well, at least you didn't send him a roast. What? When Charles and I divorced, I sent him a roast beef. You actually mailed him a roast? I sent it parcel post. Why? Well, never mind. The point is that we all do things in the heat of emotion that embarrass us later. Was it cooked? Well, you forget the roast. If you'll do me a favor. Name it. Stop worrying about me and go enjoy your honeymoon. You sure you're going to be OK? I'll do my best. Give my love to Bob. Bye. Bye. How is she? She'll be okay. Just when you think there's no one around who's caring, along comes a friend who offers a hand in sharing. The things start looking fine. Sometimes tears and sorrow are all the things you've got just when you think you're all by yourself you're not Italian, every kind of cookbook for less than ten dollars. That's terrible. Well, I just meant that maybe there was some little obscure recipe that you didn't know about. Chicken delatore, liver and peppers, who knows? That's not what I meant. And what is chicken delatore? See, you don't know every recipe. What's so terrible, then? What's so terrible is that somebody would write a book about anything and they'd sell it for only a dollar. And there is no such thing as chicken delatore, is there? I mean, you just made that name up for the sake of an argument. If you're going to use something for the sake of an argument, you might as well use something that exists. It makes your argument stronger. 
Is that so? Yes, according to argument and counter-argument. It's a book I bought for a dollar on the corner of 73rd in Amsterdam. You're kidding. No, oh, no, and there's a great book you've got to get, Guide to Corner Bookstalls. I got it on the corner of Madison and If 59. you don't want to buy a cookbook, don't buy a cookbook. What's up? Chip's been experimenting with Mom's wedding presents. Okay, how do you want your eggs? Sliced, diced, or pureed? I'm not having any breakfast. I'm saving my appetite for Ted. Ooh, Ted's coming home? Yeah, he's coming for lunch. Ah, no wonder you look so hot. Aloha! <laughs> I recognize Mom, but who's a big kahuna? Will you put me down now? No. You're my wife, and I'm gonna carry you over every threshold between New York and Honolulu. Well, now we know who wears the Bermuda shorts in this family. Please put me down. <laughs> well, okay. But only because I have to use a little grass shack in the hallway. Mom, can I please go to Hawaii with you? I'll stay out of your way. You guys aren't going anywhere if you don't hustle. Didn't you tell your dad you'd be on the 9 o'clock train? Whoops. Don't leave without saying goodbye. So, how was your first night of marital bliss? Terrible. As I was warming up, he was dozing off. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, that's okay. I divorced him. Now ask me how my second first night of marital bliss was. <laughs> Better? Oh, love is lovelier the second time around. So tell me, why are you better dressed for my honeymoon than I am? <laughs> why, this old thing? When's Ted getting back? That obvious? Well, I would at least cut off the tag. Oh. Good thing you noticed. If Ted ever saw how much this thing cost, he might know just how much I missed him. On second thought, maybe we should leave it on. Mm. <laughs> it's a shame Ted missed our wedding by just one day. Yeah. I hope that you and Bob don't miss ours. What? Well, it would be the perfect time, Allie. So I decided that when Ted gets back, I'm gonna propose. <laughs> You're not serious. When Ted proposed to you, you turned him down. That's because he proposed that we get married, move to Brooklyn, and have kids. I'm gonna propose that we get married, stay in Manhattan, and see how it goes. <laughs> are you marrying Ted because I married Bob? Maybe. Look how happy you are. If I jumped off a cliff, would you jump off a cliff? <laughs> oh, shut up, Mom. Are you happy for us or not? Very. How are you gonna propose? Over hot coals. Why don't you just shove bamboo under his fingernails? <laughs> Ted's coming over for a barbecue. I'm gonna ask him between courses. Good plan. Only we don't have a barbecue. Oh, it's just this little game we play. We use the broiler and pretend. I know it sounds silly, but it usually ends up being very romantic. Surf's up, Gidge! <laughs> I uh, told the kids we'd drop them off at the train station on the way to the airport. That's as far as Chip could con him into taking us. I'll wear him down in the camp. <laughs> oh, I wish Ted were here to throw poi. Ready, Moon Doggy? Let's go, Kokomo. Bye, Kate. Bye, Jim. Bye, Kate. Bye, Chip. Have fun at your dad's. Goodbye. Bye, Allie. Oh. Bye, Bob. Oh. Bye. <laughs> Aloha. I miss you. Have fun, guys. Dun, dun, da, da. 32 A and B right here. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so excited. Say, honey, let's get those Mai Tais flowing. We'll be coming around with a beverage cart after takeoff, sir. We don't want a beverage. We want Mai Tais. Mai Tais! Mai Tais! Mai Tais! Mai tais. Nice conservative group. Didn't you think they'd be? Who asked? There were two places left in the tour. I grabbed it. Saved $400. Give me my 200 <coughs> Herb Driscoll. Just call me Herbie. Oh, uh, Bob Barsky. Uh, this is my wife, Allie. Mm -hmm. My wife? Oh, <laughs> duly wins, huh? huh? Honeymooners, huh? Congratulations! Hey, honeymooners! <laughs> Gals on this island really wear grass skirts? Well, I packed my lawnmower. <laughs> so, uh, Herbie, sleep much on these long flights? Miss all this action? <laughs> so, which of you is IRS? IRS? Neither one of us. Our travel agent just booked us on your tour. 
Everybody works for the Internal Revenue Service? Yep. Thanks for the trip. <laughs> How about a tune? Sure thing! A tune? <clears throat> Any requests? A different flight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's one you'll all recognize. Bum! Just sit right back and you'll hear a tale. <laughs> a tale of a fateful trip, plum, plum, that started from plum, this tropic plum, port plum, aboard plum, this tiny ship. Plum, plum, plum. These people have my name. They can hurt us. The skipper, great and sure. Five passengers set sail that day for a three-hour tour. Everybody! A three-hour tour. Now, weather started getting rough. The tiny ship was... I'll get it. <laughs> Hello? Oh, hi, Ted. Where are you? I've got the barbecue all fixed up. Emilio's? But 